welcome to the breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to start a Forge server in Minecraft 1.11. But first, I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour Forge server. It's also going to be a little more difficult to set up than, say, a 24-hour server is. And because of that, I want to have a solution for you to get a 24-hour server that has one-click setup of Forge. You literally just click, click, boom. I guess that's two-click setup of Forge. But anyway, it's super easy to set it up on 1.11. Forge up and running on a server that you can give to anyone. You can give your IP to anyone. This server, you're only going to be able to give the IP address to your friends and family because it is hosted off of your own public IP and it's going to use your own computer resources. So if you don't have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM, this server is just not going to work for you. Forge server is going to take a ton of freaking RAM. So make sure that you have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM to run this server. But what if you don't? What if you don't have 8 gigabytes of RAM? What if you want to play with anyone and everyone and you don't just want to limit to your friends and family? What if you just want to be able to click a button and install Forge server and get it up and running? Well, in that case, you want to go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. That will take you to Apex Minecraft hosting an incredible, incredible server host of 24-hour servers that are DDoS protected, Really high quality. We use them ourselves. Absolutely love them. That is the breakdown.xyz slash apex. But if you do want to host a server on your own computer, let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So first off, we need to download Forge at the breakdown.xyz slash Forge or the second link down below. That will take you here where you can then hover over 1.11 and click on it. Make sure it says downloads-1.11 right here. And when it says that, come down and click installer. It will then download Forge right down here. But actually, open up Ad Focus. Then we can download Forge. But it's taking it a minute. Ad Focus isn't wanting to work for me. So I'll skip forward uh, to when it does. Oh, there it goes. It's working for me now. So we want to wait seven seconds up here in the top right. And then we'll be able to skip and download Forge. Skip and boom. There it is. Now it's going to probably ask if we want to keep this. We do. Now if we minimize our browser, we have Forge that we downloaded here. So let's go ahead and open with Java TM Platform SC Binary. It opens up this handy little mod installer. We want to go ahead and click on Install Client. Click OK. It'll go through and install the Forge client. Now you might be like, why did we just install Forge locally? Because you need that to be able to play Forge on your server. Open the installer back up here. And once you've got the installer back up, go ahead and create a new folder. And you can title it whatever. We're going to entitle ours Forge Server. Hit Enter there. And then we want to click Install Server. And then what is this? There are already files at target directory. That is correct. So hit the three dots, come over here to your desktop, and then click on Forge Server, or whatever you named your file you want to put uh, put your server in. Click Open, and then click OK. It'll now go through and download the Forge Server files and put them into this folder right here. Once this is done, we'll open this folder and uh, start the process of really getting the server going. So once it's done, it'll probably come up and say successfully installed or something like that. If it doesn't, no big deal. Go ahead and open your server here and you have libraries, forge, and minecraft underscore server. That's what you should have. Now you want to double click on where it says forge-1.11. So double click on that. It'll then go through, download some things. You can see logs, mods, and it'll continue downloading things until it opens up like a, this right here and then it'll probably crash out of it. Boom, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. The reason, we need to agree to this, the EULA. So let's go ahead and open up the EULA and read through it right here. Go to this link, read through it. If your server's not gonna break any of the things there, come back here and type EULA equals T-R-U-E. EULA equals true. Then we wanna go ahead and click File, Save, close out of the Notepad document, and now, again, double click on Forge-1.11 right there, and it will launch more files and do more things until it eventually again will open up that same exact box right here to uh, kind of go ahead and finish everything out it might crash one more time it might not if it does relaunch it again and it shouldn't crash for me here we're gonna see we don't know if it'll crash or not but we should eventually see done or something like that and there it is as we can see done once we see that the server's technically running but we want to actually go ahead and stop it so to go through, close out of that, and stop it. Now your server is set up locally. You could join it if you were to go and type in localhost and do all that stuff in Minecraft. But other people can't join it. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and come up here and hit the Windows button. 
right up here on the top left for me, probably in the bottom right for you. Just want to open up this little thing, and then we want to type CMD. Command prompt should show up. We want to right click and run that as an administrator. Then in this command prompt box, we want to type IP config, C O N F I G, IP config, hit enter, and it gives us all of this information, and 90% of which is useless. We want two numbers. We want our default gateway, and we want our IPv4 address. Now we want to come over here to where it says server properties. We want to right click with this, open with, and then we want to open it with notepad. Once you're in notepad, you want to find server IP, which is right down here at the bottom. Next to server IP, we want to put our IPv4 address. In this case, 192.168.1.1. Yours is probably going to be something completely different from that, and that is perfectly fine. Just whatever your IPv4 address is over here, copy it next to server IP over here in this uh, server properties file. Once you're done, go ahead and click File, Save, close out of it, and now we want to keep this up. We open our browser, right? Here's our internet browser. You've seen them before, I hope. <laughs> And now what we want to do is type our default gateway in a new tab. So we come over here, we want to type our default gateway, mine is 192.168.0.1. Yours will probably be something completely different, and that is perfectly fine. Once you enter that, it should pull up some kind of login box. It'll probably look something exactly like or completely different from what you see on my screen right now. If it's completely different, don't freak out. Now. What is this? What username and what password? Well, luckily, the third link down below can help you out with that. It is this website right here, thebreakdown.xyz slash router passwords, and uh, you can find your router passwords. So find whatever router you have. Let's say you had a Netgear router. You could come down here to where it says Netgear, and then you could find the model of router you have. For example, the WNDR, right? The WNDR series is very popular, and we come over here, and the username for this is admin, and the password is password, right? So you would take and enter into username, admin, and into password, password. Find yours. It might be on the physical router itself, and that is where you will find the model of your router as well as the make of your router. That's where you'll find the make and model of your router in order to find your password on router passwords. So yeah, do that. If you can't find it anywhere, contact whoever set up the network in your house. This might be your brother, your sister, your significant other, whatever. Contact them and they should be able to get it for you. They have no clue. Last resort, contact your internet service provider. Your ISP will be able to get it for you and help you at the very least at resetting it. Anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to log into mine and I'll skip to when I've logged in. When I log into my router, this is what it looks like. Yours will look like something completely freaking different. And that is perfectly fine. As long as you're expecting something different and not expecting exactly what I have here, you'll be good to go. But how do you find port forwarding? That's what we're looking for, by the way, port forwarding. So, I would first look for advanced because it's probably going to be in advanced. But as you can see, mine really doesn't have advanced anywhere. What it does have is forwarding. So you're looking for forwarding, port forwarding, apps and gaming, something like that. This is probably going to be in advanced. It's going to be in advanced advanced. It's probably going to be labeled as port forwarding, but it could also be labeled as apps and gaming. Mine is labeled as virtual servers. It could be so many different things. But what you're looking for is some sort of a port forward. If you can't find it anywhere and you're just running out of options, go to the fourth link down below and it will take you here where you can go to the router type you have and it will allow you to find the manual for that router. You can then look in that manual and be able to figure out how to port forward from there. But for me, again, it is in forwarding and then virtual servers. Now we just wanna go ahead and add new. Service port, this is going to be 25565. For you, that might say external port. It might say internal port. Doesn't matter what it says, it's going to be 25565. For me, the next one says internal port. Could be external put port for you. It could be service port. Doesn't matter what it says. Whatever it says port, if it says port next to it, it's going to be 25565. Your IP address, this is going to be your IPv4 address over here. So 
zero for me dot 102 for you it might be something completely different from that and if it is that's okay protocol you want to do all or you want to do tcp slash udp or you may have the option for both whichever one it is click that one to where it's all of them both of them if you have the option for enabled leave that common service port you don't have to do anything for that go ahead and click save and boom you port forwarded the hard part is over now, if we go ahead and minimize this, we can go back over and launch our Forge server by clicking on Forge-1.11 there. And it will open up our little server management system, if you will. We can also go ahead and just be proactive and open up the Minecraft launcher. So the Minecraft launcher is open, and right behind it, the Minecraft server opened. So boom, get the launcher up. Now, we want to make sure we're playing Forge. So we want to go into edit profile and we want to make sure that the forge version that we see right here right the forge version that we see on edit profile is the same one right there so we edit profile and this one is 11 13 19 point oh two one seven five and as you can see same numbers 13 point nineteen oh two one seven five that is correct those are the same versions so we can go ahead and play now we'll be able to join this server in two ways you or anyone else that's on the exact same network in the same house as you will be able to join using this IPv4 address over here. We'll do that first just to make sure the server's up and running. After that, we'll join how our friends will join it, how people on other networks outside of your house will join it. And that is going to be using your public IP address. So let's go ahead and multiplayer direct connect to 192 dot one six eight dot oh dot one oh two again that is our default or our ipv4 address over here one nine two one six eight oh one oh two right over there put it in your server address and join it will then launch us into the server which will be able to show up right here right boom you're now in the server simple as that easy peasy stuff see over here nick's games in the server awesome but that's not how your friends are going to join it so let's go ahead and quit disconnect from the server and we can pull this up because this is where we're going to go your friends are going to join using your public ip address which you can get by going to google right and just typing in ip and hitting enter it will then pull this up for you it's a uh, it's a blur you can't see anything but the last two numbers the reason is because you don't want to give this out to anyone People can use this to make your internet really slow. They can attack you and, and do all of that stuff. And they can also figure out where you live. All from this number right here. So be careful with who you give it to. Only give it to people you truly trust. But we can take this number. We can come back over here to Minecraft and paste it as our server address. Again, you can only see the last two numbers because we don't want anyone doing anything mischievous. Then we can go ahead and join server and it will launch into the same server again you can see my name over there but this time we've joined off our public ip now there's some things that might could happen your public ip might have numbers in, or letters in it rather and if your public ip has letters in it just contact your isp and ask them for your public ip address you'll give them some information and they'll be able to give it to you another issue you may have is people not being able to join using your public ip that is most likely caused by a port forwarding issue, so go back, make sure you did the port forwarding section of this tutorial correctly, and if you did and you know your port forward is correct, double check it because you might have mistyped something, but if you know your port forward is correct, it's most likely some sort of a firewall causing it, but unfortunately we don't teach how to uninstall and how to turn off firewalls because it's just not safe to do that, just to be honest. It's not safe, and at that point you'd be better off probably spending some money to get a 24-hour server. So, that brings me back around to Apex Minecraft Hosting. They're an awesome 24-hour Minecraft server hosting company that has secure servers that you can give the IP address to anyone. They're DDoS protective, so if someone does want to do something, like try to take your server down, Apex will be able to handle that. It's an incredible, incredible server. We've used them for years. Go check them out. Anyway, guys, this has been The Breakdown. I hope you now have an awesome 1.11 Forge server. If you want to install mods on this server, it is a little tricky. So please, please, please just check out the video that's on your screen right now. It walks you through how to install mods in Minecraft 1.11 Forge servers. It's it's a little bit of a tricky process and some mods aren't compatible and all that stuff. So I'll walk you through all of that. 
go check it out. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We make awesome videos every single day of the week. This has been The Breakdown, and I'm out, guys. Peace.